Hi guys, welcome back to another Hugh Jeffries video. In this video, I'm going to be attempting to resurrect this 2017 MacBook Pro. I traded a refurbished iPhone 6S along with only $20. That's right, only $20 for this 2017 Mac laptop. The previous owner had two of these MacBooks, this one and another with a cracked display. Using the two machines, they created a fully functional one which they kept, and this one, which contained the faulty parts, and that laptop was sold to me. The MacBook Pro I purchased was described to me as having a non-functional keyboard, trackpad, and a cracked display. While I didn't receive a charger with the laptop, I was quite happy with my purchase. My aim for this laptop is to assess the reason why the keyboard and trackpad don't work, see if it's eligible for the free keyboard replacement from Apple, and then hopefully be able to replace the cracked display and bring this laptop back into fully functional condition. But before we get started, I'd like to thank the team over at iFixit for sponsoring this video. Get parts, tools, and guides at ifixit.com slash Jeffries or at the link below. For those wondering why I could possibly get such a new Mac for only $20, the owner was looking for a phone upgrade for their mother and had this broken laptop that they didn't want to spend the money on to have repaired. They also included some old iPhone logic boards for me to practice on in the package that I received, which was absolutely awesome. Uh, most of these are either dead or iCloud locked, so they're not functional phones, but that is something good just to screw around with and get some practice. Now, as for this MacBook, I pulled it out and just pressed the power button to see if it had any sort of charge. It didn't, so I had to go out and borrow a charger from someone and I could power on the laptop. The first thing, obviously, I noticed was the screen is cracked and I actually managed to crack it more just cleaning the screen with a microfiber cloth and that just shows how fragile that display really is. I hooked up a external monitor, keyboard and mouse and was able to erase the SSD drive which is in fact 256 gigs, so it's the same size as my iPod Classic. Thankfully, this isn't the base model which shipped with a 128 gigabyte SSD. Getting along with the installation, I'm going to be installing macOS Mojave and once I set this up on the machine, I'm going to be able to perform some basic troubleshooting just to see whether this is a software issue or is something more deeper into the system of the computer. I jumped into System Profiler and took a look at the USB tree and you can see my keyboard and mouse that I have hooked up externally, but none of the internal keyboard or trackpad is showing up in this diagram, which has me thinking that there's something wrong on the logic board. Taking a look at the power settings, I also noticed that the battery is not charging, has zero charge cycles and has zero charge capacity. So it is not looking good at the moment for this MacBook Pro. As soon as I unplug the USB-C cable, the device will shut off, which is obviously showing that the laptop isn't detecting the battery at all. So I'm going to open up the machine to take a look inside and make sure there is no indication of water damage, which of course would render the keyboard replacement program uh, not applicable to this machine. At a first glance, all of the water indicators are still white on the upper side of the logic board, but I want to remove the board itself so I can take a look at the other side, make sure there's no corrosion, any damage, before I take it in and have its keyboard looked at. Now this is quite a difficult process given the extensive amount of cables, brackets and screws that need to be removed before we can wiggle out this delicate logic board from the MacBook Pro. Now it's quite odd that the keyboard, trackpad and battery all don't function. Now I did get in contact with the guy I purchased this off and he said that the battery was working when he was last using it. So it seems a little strange that all these things have failed. So hopefully it isn't a board level issue and if the keyboard is replaced, I will be able to have a fully functional MacBook Pro again. With the logic board finally removed, we can take a closer look at it with some high resolution photos. From these photos, I couldn't find any issues with the board and I've left them in here so you can take a look and see whether you notice anything abnormal with the logic board, but to me, it's looking pretty good. So I reassembled the laptop and brought it into my nearest Apple reseller. I told them I'd open the device, verified that there was no water damage or liquid damage with the device and couldn't figure out why the keyboard, trackpad and battery all didn't function. Now I only went in for the keyboard replacement, but I was told the keyboard is actually not replaceable, but rather 
the whole upper case needed to be replaced. Now this is seen with all the new MacBook Pro models, is that the keyboard is fused to the aluminum housing, which means Apple doesn't just replace the keyboard, but they also replace the trackpad, the battery, and the whole upper shell of the laptop. The repair was approved, showing only the power button was functional on the keyboard. However, if Apple was to reject my old top case given physical damage, liquid, not a genuine part, or the new top case serial number couldn't be paired, I would have to pay the outer warranty costs. Fortunately, my old top case was accepted as faulty and a new one was fitted. The new top case brought back the keyboard and trackpad function, however the new battery still wasn't detected. Multiple top cases were tried on the laptop over the course of a few weeks, with various issues affecting the replacement top case assemblies. I eventually received a call that they had shipped my laptop to Apple to have a look at. Around two weeks later, I received a call that the logic board had been replaced and I was ready to pick up my new MacBook Pro in working condition. Upon picking up my device, I was told that the shop was invoiced $700 for the repairs. A few days later, they sorted out the issue for me and I picked up my MacBook Pro free of charge. So all that's left to fix now is that cracked LCD. And for this repair, I'm going to be using a magnetic mat from iFixit, an iFixit ProTech toolkit, and a replacement display, which you guessed it, is also from iFixit. This fits the 2016 and 2017 MacBook Pros. So I'm going to need to reopen the MacBook Pro, take a look to see if anything looks different on the inside now that they've replaced just about everything in this machine. The bottom cover is quite hard to remove given the two very strong clips on either side, but once you get them loose, the bottom cover will come off. You can see them here on the left and right hand sides. Inside, I'm going to disconnect the battery before I remove the display as I don't want to damage my brand new logic board inside the machine. You can see that they didn't apply some adhesive on that cable there. However, that's not a big deal as I'll do that myself when reassembling the device. Removing the display is quite a time consuming process given the seven different driver bits that I needed to perform the repair. There is a variety of Torx and Apple's own Pentalo bit throughout the repair. Compared to previous generations of MacBook Pro, I found this device much more difficult to repair. One upside though to this USB-C non-touch bar MacBook Pro is that it has a replaceable SSD drive which is not found in the touch bar models of these machines. SSDs only have a certain number of read and write cycles per chip and eventually they do wear out and need replacing. However, with the newer MacBook Pros that have the touch bar, they're all soldered to the logic board of the device, meaning that if the SSD drive fails, there is no physical way of replacing it without complex micro soldering. Now that I've removed all of the screws, I can remove that space gray display from the frame. We are now halfway through the repair and that means it's time to crack out a replacement iFixit LCD panel and get that installed on this MacBook Pro. Sliding it out of the plastic, you'll notice that it's in a heap of protective films, which will help us not damage it when we actually go to install the screen back onto the device. Now, when you get your replacement display, it is likely that the hinges will be pushed into a closed position. I'll need to bend those outward so I can actually fit this back onto the frame and attach the screws. It can take some persuasion to be able to align the screen and get it through the gap. Once you tighten the screws, you may notice the screen is not aligned with the rest of the computer. In this case, all you need to do is loosen the three screws, move the display into the correct position, and tighten the screws again. After you've correctly aligned it, you can continue on reassembling the rest of the device. You want to proceed with caution when reinstalling the display, as the display cables are very fragile, so make sure that they're not pinched when you install any of the screws or the antenna. Lastly, I'll need to install all the remaining screws, brackets and connections before I can test out the laptop. I won't completely assemble the device without testing it first to verify that everything is functional before I go and install the bottom cover. There's a lot of screws to cover here, so this can take a serious amount of time. Now that we've installed the new display, all I need to do is reconnect the battery with the one screw, 
connect up this cable above it and we can open up the laptop and give it a test. At first, it didn't show any signs of life, but it appeared just to be a little bit of lag between pressing the power button and the display lighting up. I could set up the Mac for the first time as it had been erased after the repairs. Booting in, it seems to be working, so it's time to reassemble the last bits of the device before we can have a fully functional laptop. Using some alcohol, I could give the inside a clean to remove any of my fingerprints, reinstall the plastic piece protecting the battery connection, and remove any of the old residue that was left on the SSD drive. Once the inside was looking brand new, we essentially had a brand new MacBook Pro, it was time to reinstall the bottom cover and seal up this MacBook for good. Six pentalobe screws are all that remains to this repair. I like to put them in starting at the corners first to make sure the bottom plate aligns correctly. I could then get some more cleaning alcohol and remove some residue that was left by a sticker. I could then remove the plastic film from the top lid of the new display. And lastly, remove the plastic film from the inside of the screen. And we're done. So this is it, a 2017 MacBook Pro with a 33 centimeter display, 256 gig SSD, eight gigs of RAM, and a 2.3 gigahertz Intel Core i5. The battery is brand new and only has three charge cycles, and the rest of the computer is now fully functional. The total cost of this MacBook was around 600 US dollars, as replacement displays are very expensive on Mac laptops. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and consider checking out the restoration playlist for more videos just like this one. Also, make sure to follow me on my social media so you don't miss any of the behind the scenes content. I'll leave a link for that down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.